Again, welcome everybody to today's Europass talk. And the title of, the, of the, today's talk is Free Online Tools for Teaching, Exploring the Best Apps for Teaching and Learning. And I'm your presenter today. My name is Dr. Robert Schramborn. And just would like to give you a few pieces of information about myself, who I am. Um, this is my first appearance here on uh, uh, Facebook, on the Europass Teacher Academy Facebook page. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a background about me. And so I'm originally from Germany, but I'm living in Ireland since 2006. So since 14 years I'm here. I have a PhD in neuroscience, so my background is actually not in uh, teaching, but in science. Uh, originally, and uh, after I got my PhD here in Ireland, I was uh, a postdoctoral researcher at Systems Biology Ireland, um, where I was working among other projects also on combining computational modeling with medical data. And since 2014, I have been a teacher trainer first with the Amgen Biotech experience, where I was uh, helping uh, Irish secondary school teachers to learn how to use laboratory equipment, such as micropipettes and uh, DNA gel electrophoresis devices. And uh, since 2018, I'm a teacher trainer with Europass Teacher Academy. I was uh, facilitating lots of courses here in Dublin, and uh, since, well, since uh, last year, I'm also director at uh, Teacher Academy Ireland, which is our Irish branch of Europass Teacher Academy. Okay, Kate Mealy Faultje, welcome to Ireland. I would like to say I'm streaming here live from Dublin, and at the moment we have a blue sky there's not a single cloud there. It's a, it's a, a very nice day. And uh, I wish you could be here as well. But of course, these days it's difficult um, to travel. And uh, But I hope that once this is all over, you will have the opportunity to come to Dublin, to Ireland, and uh, explore the city. The people who are very genuine and friendly, Irish people are very f uh, friendly and uh, enjoy um, the time here. All right, now let's start. But before we start, I have two questions for you. Um, if you can just put it in the comments, I would like to know from which country are you, or well, rather where are you now in which country? And uh, have you used any online tools for teaching before 2020. I'm pretty sure nowadays you are very savvy with the internet since we all have now to teach remotely and um, that uh, and that well I, I still hope that some of the things that I show you today are um, new to you um, but I think, I think from what I've seen, you're already doing a great job adapting to these new circumstances. Okay, so now just put in the comments, if you can, it would be nice to see where you are. And um, if this is all new to you from this year on, or if you have previous experience with online tools. Okay. Now, as I said before, today we are talking about free online tools for teaching. And uh, what does it include? Well, it's certainly more than just having a Zoom or a Skype meeting. There are many, many tools out there. And they're tools that can make, uh, on the, make information more visual. You can find those on the internet where you can connect text with images. And uh, this is very important because for, you, for the student to be engaged um, now that they're not in class but at home with millions of other distractions, 
it's uh, it's important that um, you give them not just some text, uh, but also some images. And the more you can link up the images with the text, the better, because the brain gets easily distracted. Uh, but if you have several uh, channels that you use to um, uh, to get the same message across to your students, that will get the brain's attention. The more channels, the better. So if you can connect speaking with an image or text with an image, that's great. Also, on the internet, there are tools that can make information also audible. So if you have an image or a text, you can ease, uh, there are programs that allow you to add your own voice to it. So then you have three channels already, the text, the image, and your voice. And this is great because uh, this will really help uh, the students to pay attention. And um, you, you probably also have heard that some people are more visually stimulated, while others are more stimulated by words. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail with uh, the different learning styles, but in general, the rule, the more channels you offer uh, to get the same information across, the better, uh, because that will really uh, help with the engagement of the student. And um, besides that, of course, on the internet, you can find tools that allow students to interact with the content. And this, again, brings it to another level. You're not just, the student is not just there passively absorbing the information, whatever channel is coming in, by allowing the students to, to interact with it. Uh, they become active users of the content. And this is really boosting uh, engagement uh, to have your students do that, uh, to play an active part there, to discover more pieces of information and um, I will show you uh, today one tool that's great for this. And uh, of course, there are also tools that allow students to contribute, where uh, they're not just interacting with the content, but where they can add their own answers or comments or pieces of information or questions to the learning content, to the lesson. Uh, so. Uh, and, to, and just to say there are lots and lots of these different tools that allow you to do that. And uh, while, of course, it's not the same as being in class, it's, uh, it's still enhancing the experience of the student and uh, makes it easier for them to get engaged and immersed into the lesson content. Okay. Now, I just see on the comments that... Uh, you're pretty much from all over the place, uh, from Greece, Slovakia, from Croatia, Cyprus, Portugal, Bulgaria. That's great. It's great to have uh, people from so many European countries tuning in. And uh, do we have someone from outside? Oh, from Ghana as well. Fantastic. That's great. So we're really getting international here. Okay. Now, okay, so all these tools, um, of course, I will not be able to talk about all of them today, but I have an online course in preparation, uh, which uh, where we'll talk about all the different, or lots of the different aspects that internet tools can provide. Uh, in this course, that I will uh, talk about online platforms for education, for example, Edmodo, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, and uh, how they work, what's the differences between them, and uh, what is best for which situation. I will uh, also have a session about interactive presentations, how to make your presentations interactive, how you can add questions and comments, and at the same time see what the students are answering. Um, I will also have uh, um, material about interactive videos. Nowadays, uh, you can get lots and lots of educational videos on YouTube and other channels. And uh, But in, interactive videos are one step further, where you are able to, um, to essentially edit the videos, to just pick those pieces that 
are interesting for you, where you can add questions and comments, and also see if your students have actually watched the whole video or just part of it. Uh, so there are some great programs out there. And then I will also talk about, um, well, I will have the session about online quizzes and game-based learning. There are tons of different uh, quiz softwares that you can uh, access online and for free. And uh, so we will talk a bit about the difference between them. Um, as I said, you probably already know Kahoot, but there are many more. And another session will be about uh, collaborating online and um, and what to, uh, um, well, and how students can essentially share information with each other and with you and uh, build something up together. So this course will come soon and uh, it will actually be just the first of many courses that uh, Europass Teacher Academy is going to offer online. Um, for the details on this, have a look at uh, at this website that's displayed here at the at the bottom you will also find it uh, the link to it and the description to this live session so uh, at the moment it's uh, it's just a landing page but just check it in the upcoming days and you will soon uh, see all the details there okay but now back to today so Today is a live session about free online tools for teaching, and I would like to present you with some examples of how these tools look like. And uh, the first example I want to talk uh, about is FreeWise, FreeWise, which is a quiz website. And uh, so it's uh, uh, this is the link, and let's have a look. At the actual website. Now, so, what is FreeRise? Uh, FreeRise is essentially a quiz software um, or a quiz website where you can choose from different types of quizzes. Uh, this here is now a, a language English vocabulary um, quiz question, and I think it's actually set at a very high level. So you have a word here, perpend, and you have to now uh, figure out what is what is another meaning of perpend. Could it be to yank, could it be ponder, require, or speak badly of? Now let's uh, make a guess, and I'll just say require. Ah, that was not correct. It's ponder, okay, but there's a new question coming up. Now I'm going to change the setting to the difficulty level setting because actually this was the hardest level. And I have to say this is really hard. Even though I'm living in Ireland since 14 years and I'm speaking English, um, it's a bit difficult to know all of the words. So let's start with the easiest and go back to the game. This might make it a bit e uh, easier to understand. So here we have the word independence. And what does independent mean? It doesn't mean helper, vacation, wager, or freedom. And well, independence is about freedom. So we click this, and we answer this correctly. Cop is another word for policeman. And of course, this is now very easy. Uh, see now. If I answer a question correctly, I have here this bowl, and in this bowl, uh, the number of rice grains is growing each time I answer a question correctly. And this is the uh, remarkable thing about this website, and uh, this is why I like it so much. Every time you answer a question correctly, 10 grains of rice, or the equivalent of it, will be donated to the World Food Programme of the United Nations. And so that is, by doing this quiz, your students not only uh, improve their learning, but they also do something against world hunger. And uh, this is, of course, very relevant, especially today, this year. Uh, there's been a prediction that uh, many countries, 
in the developing world will uh, suffer food shortages out of various reasons. And these predictions have been made even before the uh, coronavirus hit, uh, crisis hit. So there are lots of um, uh, lots uh, lots <coughs> uh, so there are lots of motivation factors to do this. Now I'm just seeing here this uh, comment this is only for language teachers. No, it's not only for language teachers um, and not just this program. Let's have a look because you can play different categories. You can uh, so we are here at the English vocabulary section and you also have an English grammar section, but you also have lots of other uh, possibilities uh, and things you can uh, test. For example, you have lots of different ones about geography, identify countries on the map or flags of the world. You also have humanities topics where you can have a quiz about famous paintings or literature. And uh, you have other languages as well, of course, but also mathematics, multiplication table, basic mathematics, and also a few about science and medicine, human anatomy, chemical symbols. And uh, the latest one up here is one about the coronavirus. So they're trying to be updated. And so, yeah, you have lots of different categories that you can choose from to, uh, to, do a, uh, to do a quiz and answer questions and essentially gain rice for uh, the hungry people of the world. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, this is free rice. Um, it's a great program. And uh, it's very quick to use. Um, it's uh, unfortunately you cannot change quizzes yourself. Uh, the next programs that we will look at will be a bit more um, uh, for your own content. Um, but I thought I show this to you anyway because I think it's a it's a great way of uh, connecting both education and uh, essentially. Um, helping the World Food Program. Okay, right, so let's go back to our list of programs. The next free online tool I would like to uh, talk to you about is Screencast-O-Matic, which allows for easy screen recording. Now, some of you might know this program already. Um, but I think it's very convenient, so I'm just showing this to you in case you haven't heard about it so far. Now, so if you click on the link, you come to this page here. And here, in order to use the screen recorder, you have to click on Start Recording for free. And then this brings you to another page where you have to click again on this button here, Launch Free Recorder. So this takes now a moment to load. And here we are now. If you click on here, it's very inconspicuous, and you have your um, you have just have this little icon here in the corner, and uh, where you can because you don't want anything big, as you want to record your screen, um, it shouldn't be too obtrusive. So this is already a great design. Uh, here you can change the settings, and you can go from uh, recording just your screen to recording on you with the webcam. And OK, see now that does not really work because I am already using the webcam. The webcam is busy. If 
for the live streaming, but it will work usually for you when you use it. And of course, you can use both. Um, where you are then in the corner, just like me with the, uh, with the live streaming now. Um, the maximum time that you can use this is for 15 minutes, at least in the free version. So you can make a 15 minute screen recording. But of course, you can do multiple uh, recordings of 15 minutes if you want to do more than just that. Um, for the screen, you have different possibilities. You can go for full screen, uh, which is everything that, uh, that's on the monitor. You can just choose the active window, or you can go for a selected area and just drag that over there. Um, I usually go for full screen because uh, then I know I'm not missing anything. Uh, here you see the, the microphone is active. You see it picks up my voice. Uh, what the free version does not do is it's not recording any sounds that the computer makes. So, for example, if you were to record a YouTube video, then it would only pick up the, uh, the visuals but not the sound. Um, uh, of course, you don't need to record YouTube video because you can just link to it, but just to know how it works. You can activate this as well in the paid version, um, so you have this possibility. Now, um, but uh, for most things, I would say the free version is, uh, is sufficient. Um, one more thing, uh, you have here the preferences. If you click on this, you have a couple of uh, things that you can um, adjust. The most important thing I would say is the first one, it's the pause hotkey. So if you, pre if you do a recording and you press Alt plus P, then um, your recording will pause. Uh, but you and you can, for example, then think about what you want to say next and how to continue, and then you activate it again. Uh, this is great because when you finish a recording, the whole uh, recorder closes again, and you have to restart it by clicking on the buttons. So it's uh, easier to use the pause button. Okay, let's do a little trial run. So. Um, I'm going to the record uh, to my presentation again, and I'm going to click record. And now I have this countdown, which is also great, and now I can talk. And uh, so here I can move my cursor, click on things, and uh, to go back to another page. And uh, so this is just a quick demonstration. I finish it here now. Uh, you, it's, that might have been hard to see, but there was a little pause sign here in the corner. And um, uh, so this is how you stop your recording then. And now I can have a look what I recorded. It says I recorded from 18 seconds, which is also great. And now I can talk. And uh, Okay, so here you see now it recorded my voice, and uh, what's also nice is the cursor has a, a yellow circle around it, so that makes it even easier to see it to see where you're pointing when you do when you record your video. Uh, so all in all, it's very straightforward, easy to use, and uh, once you're done with your video. Uh, or you can also backtrack and to uh, just continue recording at this position. Let's say you made a blooper, you uh, just uh, click and start from here and uh, do the recording again. And once you're happy with it, you say done, and then you can save your video. The edit uh, video function is again something that you would need to pay for. Um, so screencast o -matic, is essentially working in a freemium mode. You have a lot of free stuff, but if you want everything, you need to pay the premium, the price there. Okay, 
But you can just go to save, you can watch it again, and then you have the option to save it as an MP4 file. Uh, for example, if you click on here, um, and um, or you can also go upload it to the Screencast-O-Matic website, or you can even upload it to YouTube if you like. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to save this one, but there you have it. This is Screencast-O-Matic. It's very easy to use, no installation or so. You always just, uh, yeah, when you're finished and you want to use it again, you need to again click on this button and click again on launching free recorder because it's really only launched for the one video and when you finish this it stops and you have to launch it again. Okay, so this is Screencast-O-Matic and uh, this is the second program I want to show you and it's really easy for screen recording and now I would like to talk to you about ThingLink. Uh, which is an interactive image creator. So, um, the great thing is also you can create interactive images and your students don't need to sign up to anything. What you do is you create the interactive image, and I'll show you in a moment how that works, and then you uh, just publish a link or you, or you copy the link of this uh, interactive image and just share this with your students, and then they can just look at it. No sign-up required from, from their side. Um, so, and the nice thing about it is, by having an interactive image, it's much easier for them to remember the, the facts that you've embedded in this picture. Let's show you an example. Now, this is actually an interactive image that was made by a participant uh, of one of my courses here in Dublin. And so as an, as an image, he chose the building of the European Commission. And you see here these different tags, they contain information that is embedded. For example, here at the European flag, it says there are currently 28 members in the EU, and the anthem is Ode of Joy. Uh, of course, this is a bit outdated. By now, it's only 27, as um, Britain has officially left the EU. Um, however, well, let's not get into this in detail. All right, so I have a piece of information here about the EU in general. Then you have here information about the Commission. Who is the Commission? Um, who are the members of the Commission? And uh, it also gives information that the Commission comes with over 30,000 civil servants that uh, work for this Commission. Here we have an image how the uh, meeting uh, room looks like. Now it mentions here the interaction between the European Council and the European Parliament and the Commission. Here you have again uh, information about uh, how the Commission works, and uh, here a de definition in terms of governmental structure that the European Commission is the executive branch of the European Union. And on top, there's another picture of Ursula von der Leyen, the current co uh, president of the Commission. So, I really like this interactive image because when you look at all these pieces of information, if you had taken this information, all this text, and just put it into a text file, it would have been quite a long text file with lots of different pieces of information. The thing is though, it would have been probably very hard for, you, for a student who would just be reading this text to remember all of these details uh, because there's a bit of repetition there, there are lots of numbers there that someone who is not familiar with uh, the European governmental structure might not really relate to very easily. Uh, so by using this interactive image and using a background image, which is actually quite striking, this is a very striking looking building, 
Um, the st uh, and the student has a chance, first of all, to discover the content themselves. It's not just plain there in a Word document. They actually have to search for it at the different tags. And uh, also what they can do um, when they try to remember it, they, they can visualize the image of this building and it's much easier for the brain to connect the information. Um, it's, um, uh, and this is really helpful. You know, the student can visualize the image and then tr uh, when he rem tries to remember the image, it's much easier than to remember all the data that comes with it. What is the European Commission? What is the relationship to the European Parliament and the European Council? So this is a really great um, remembering aid for your students that you can use. So let's see, how uh, can you create uh, such an interactive image? Let's have a look. So we go to the website. And uh, so I've already logged in. To my account, I'm already logged into my account. And um, in order to now create an interactive image, I go here to create. And here I have several options. I can upload an image. One can also make interactive videos. However, this is not for f not free uh, in ThingLink. You have to uh, go for the premium to do this. Uh, so we are focusing here only on uh, uh, creating an interactive image. Um, if you go, just to mention, if you go for the premium, you could also work with 360 degree images or even 360 degree videos. Um, but again, this is for the premium part. Uh, you see here, um, everything that has this little crown on it is, uh, is also part of the premium that is locked for the free version. But OK, let's go and create an interactive image. And for this, I'm now choosing an image. And I choose this here. I open it. And now, here we are. This is uh, an image of a skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex in the Senckenberg Museum in Frankfurt, Germany. Now, this is the image, and now I'm going to make it interactive. So I click on the Adding tag, and so this is my tag, and I can move it around. It doesn't have to stay in the middle. They always appear in the middle, but then you can move them somewhere else. So now I can add it over here, for example. And I can now add text and media, for example. If I click on this, I have the option to give this um, pop-up window a title. And so here I'm asking the question, what did the Rex really look like? So, and um, seeing as we see the skeleton, but what did he actually look like? Do we know? So let's see if we have a picture. And look at this. Now, it used to be the case that um, dinosaurs, uh, as they are, Reptiles, or at least related to reptiles, were all uh, shown uh, as if they had only the reptile skin. But uh, it looks like recent discoveries or ideas, hypotheses have changed this. And now we see an image of Tyrannosaurus rex with some kind of fluffy hair at the back, which is quite peculiar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image to use it for the thing. So I save it and uh, also here's a link to the to an article 
where this image features and uh, where you can find more information about why uh, scientists think uh, that it looks like this and what the latest discoveries are. Okay, let's go back to our thing link. I can now add the also the, um, the link to the website. And here I can now add the image that I just saved. I saved it over here. Here's my image. So I open this. And now I have here the image and uh, also the link to the actual website. So I close this here. Uh, this is my first tag for this interactive image. If I click on it, the question comes up in picture of the dinosaur, how it's supposed to look like, and a link to the actual website where you can find or where students can then find more information about this. Okay, let's go back to our thing links. This is just one tag. I have the, um, I can add lots more tags. I don't think there is a limit in the amount of tags I can add. So let's add another tag. And this time, let's just add a text label. So what I do is I'm going to move this over here and explain a bit about who this is. Uh, this is my son, David. And he loves dinosaurs. And I change also the icon into something else. I'm going to pick a D. So if I click on it once, I have to click on it again. Um, and the D stands both for David and Dinosaur. So now, if I hover over it, I don't even need to click it, the text comes up uh, saying, this is my son David, he loves dinosaurs. Now, okay, this is the second tag. Let's add some more. I can also add content from a website. And so this is a great uh, tag uh, for if you want to add YouTube videos, for example. So let's go and search for a YouTube video. Uh, one that I really like is about how to build a dinosaur from a chicken. And it's, it's a TED talk. <laughs> we want is we just want to copy the URL which is essentially this thing up here and just click on here it's a bit more convenient because then I can integrate it into my thing link. So I paste the URL here and now I have the video so it's like done and this is the video and it shows this TED talk about building a dinosaur from chicken by Jack Horner. It's a great uh, TED talk. He's talking about how dinosaurs and chickens are related, how you could even uh, say that birds are the living, surviving dinosaurs, um, or at least a branch of dinosaurs. And he also has some other very interesting information uh, about the latest discovery of how Scientists think that dinosaurs lived back in the day. So uh, it's well worth watching, especially if you're interested in dinosaurs. So we have this as well. Now I'm going to move this over here. And what I want to do is I click on it again to edit it because I want to change the icon. And I want to change it to the video sign. So I click on it again. Done. Now I know this is the video. Okay. Now, let's add one more tag. And, uh, well, there are actually two more. What I can also do is, so I click here again on Add Text and Media. So here you see I can add a title, I can add a, a website link, an image. I can also upload an audio file, or I can make a recording myself. So 
You can record your own voice to give some explanations, which is great, or you can upload an audio file. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload an audio. I want to upload a dinosaur roaring. So in order to do that, I go to a different website. I open a new tab here, and I go to and search for free sound effects that I can use. And I use freesound.org. And um, I've already signed in, which enables me to download these free sounds. And I'm now going to search for dinosaur war. And here we have a few. I'm going to go for, let's have a look at this one. And I play it. Can you hear that? I think it sounds great. It really sounds like a dinosaur. Okay, so I'm going to download this. And what I'm going to do is I have this now in my download folder. So great. Now I can go back and I can go upload audio. It's an MP3 file. This format works for ThingLink. Now here's my downloads. Here is my dinosaur roar. Open it. There we go. I've added it to my uh, interactive tag. Now, I change the icon as well. And I'm going to add a little description for the audio credit. Um, so this is, what's it called again? Let's see. Dinosaur Loud War 2. Checking, I can use this. It's licensed under the Creative Commons. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. Unfortunately. Okay, great. So I'm free to share it and to adapt it, and I just need to attribute it. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm attributing it to the creator. So, okay. This is it. I put this here with the mouses. And now, click this copy. There we go. Could be a bit louder, but it still works. Okay. Now, I. And so this is what I can do with adding text and media. Um, oh yeah, one thing. You can also just add a narrative under there. And for this, you go to, sorry, once again, you go to settings. Uh, you have a couple more options here. Um, for example, color scheme, where you can change the color scheme of your pop-up notes. So look at this here. If I click on this one, it has a black background and white um, writing, and a white box and a black writing. If I go back, it's again white background and black writing, and a blue box and white writing here. Okay, we keep it at that. And um, if I click on tag animation, then they will get bigger and uh, make little um, uh, actions that show you where they are. But what I actually wanted to show you is that here again you can upload an audio or record your own voice. Now if I go here, upload audio, and I just choose the same one just as an explanation, what happens it will actually be displayed here at the bottom. So um, this is great if you have a longer description, if you want to say something, you just put this here. 
and then you have this little audio recording at the bottom, uh, which students will probably uh, look at first to understand what this is about. Now, um, one more thing. I would like to show you another tag that you can add. So we see now add text and media, we see an add text label, and we see an add content from website. But you can also create a tour where you, if I click on this, um, I'm selecting a scene, and this means I can now choose another of my images and uh, connect it to this one. So at the moment, I don't have any other suitable. So what I might do is I might say, um, well, delete tag for now and say done. And now I'm um, just go back and I'm just going to add another image. Let's see. And Oh yeah, this one. Okay, so I could add more tags here. And um, let's say let's add one tag. Three thousand. Okay, done. Okay, I'm going out of here now, and I go back to my original one. I go here if I want to edit it again. I just click here on this edit button and oh yeah this plays automatically uh, once I open it and now I go to add tag go down to create tour I select a scene and now I'm selecting my triceratops and I say done and now when I click on this one See, I got moved to there, but I have to get out of the image. Okay, now here we go. This is the image how it will look like. I have to press it. And the roar comes. And now if I click on this one, here I am. I'm in the next uh, interactive image about the triceratops. Now, best thing is, of course, if I build another one in here to go back. To the but so there we are now, we have our interactive image that students can explore. And now for them to explore it, what I need to do is I need to press the share button. I click here on share and I have lots of different possibilities. I can embed it on my website. I can share the link, which is probably the easiest thing to do. I can publish it on Facebook or Edmodo or Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or any of the other ones. Um, if you choose the upgrade, you can also um, uh, download it for offline use and you can also donate the lesson so that others can actually access it for free. And for us now, the most interesting one is to share the link. Now, one thing that's very important, before you copy this link and share it with your students, um, have a look at this. Some scenes in this tour are not publicly available and will require the viewer to sign in. If you are publishing for a wider audience, so or if you want your students not to having to sign in, you have to change the visibility setting, settings. So click on this link and now I want to change the visibility from my organization to public. Or I can also uh, do it to unlisted. Then the difference is that if it's public, everybody can see it. If it's unlisted, you need the, um, the link to see it and you won't find it by a search engine. So let's put it to unlisted. And now I can copy the link. I might just Hide the thing link interface. The students don't need this. So I copy the link now and uh, I now go to a different browser. This one here. And I paste the link. And here we have our interactive image. 
Okay. So this is how it works, how you can create an interactive image or even uh, uh, several slides of interactive images that connect together. Um, one thing I should let you know, though, is that while this is for free, you only have a limited amount of viewings. You can find those by going to Settings. Uh, let's see. Close. Actually, no. I have to go to More Actions. Um, haha. No, first of all, I have to go back to the home page. Now, I should be able to click on this. Now, let's see where it finds us. No, this is just the upgrade. Ah, yeah, here we go. Account settings. So you click, and to find this, you have to go on your profile, click on the little arrow, and then you find the account settings. And here, at the moment, I have this current subscription plan, which is for free. Uh, because I'm signed up as a teacher. So you can, when you sign up, you can create a free teacher account, and uh, but you have only a limited number of views. Well, 1,000 views. So far, I've used two of these views, so that's not too bad. Um, but it just means it's not unlimited. You can use it for, well, a good few sessions. If, you're, if you have a class of 30, then, well, if you have three interactive images, you might go to uh, shortly before 100. But so, yeah, you can do, um, well, about uh, 30 or more interactive images with 1,000 views, uh, at least for one class. Um, uh, there are, of course, possibilities to to buy it. And, uh, uh, but I think the easy thing there is, is to convinced your um, school director to uh, get this for the school, or use a different program. There are also other programs that uh, allow something similar, all with different uh, possibilities and, uh, well, restrictions, depending. OK, so this is ThingLink. It's a great tool for making uh, content interactive, making images uh, interactive, and uh, I hope you like it and I hope that you will use it yourself with your students. Now, let's continue. Well, or rather, this is now we're coming to an end of this live session, and uh, so once again, for those that have joined later, um, I will actually offer a whole course over several days um, about the different tools, online tools that are available, uh, ranging from online platforms for education, where we compare Edmodo, um, Microsoft Teams, and Google Classroom. Another session will be about interactive presentations and one about interactive videos. We've now talked about interactive images. So there are lots of other programs that allow other forms uh, to become interactive as well. We will have another session about online quizzes and game-based learning. Uh, as you probably, know, you probably know Kahoot. And uh, of course, there are lots of other programs besides Kahoot, all with different abilities and, uh, and strengths. And then we're going to have one session about collaborating online, how your students can share content with each other, and uh, how else the group work can be easily assessed by you. So this course will come soon, um, and it's just going to be one of many courses that uh, the Europass Teacher Academy will offer online. Um, for details, check this link here at the bottom. Uh, at the moment, we only have a landing page there, but uh, the details will be up there soon and uh, okay it doesn't let me access it now have a look at the description to this live session there you find the link as well and um, you can then 
uh, find out more about the courses that are coming up. And next Wednesday, there will be another talk, another Europass talk. And so I hope you will tune in again and uh, learn and uh, that you will learn something else that's helpful for you. Okay, and with that, I'm finishing. So um, enjoy the rest of the day. And I'm now saying goodbye. Bye-bye.